Thank you very much, uh, Mark. And uh, as always, great to listen to you, uh, President. And uh, while I can't be with you in a few weeks' time, uh, I know that uh, you will lead the uh, commemorations and celebrations in your own country. Uh, and I wish you well with that, because I, I know that uh, you have uh, very much embraced all, all that has been uh, powerful in the change in your own country and what you've done to uh, see that develop. And, the time you give to ICD as well, but uh, you have been a, a great source of inspiration to uh, all of us in Europe uh, that want to see change and peace and compromise and, and progress. And uh, I know that you will have some uh, great days to, to celebrate that, and I, 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 I wish you well. I, I will the far end of China uh, at the time, only for that I, I would be so more glad to be with you, and it's far nearer to Dublin too, I can tell you that, and I've been there. I just want to really say, Two things. I spoke earlier um, uh, about the, uh, the 25 years uh, that we have uh, witnessed this night and that hundreds of thousands of people uh, just a few kilometres from here are, are witnessing and maybe later on to, in the night maybe, maybe uh, go witness as well uh, and see some of the, uh, the fun uh, that will be out on the, on the streets. I just want to take two, two points. What I want to say about my own involvement in kind of where we've been in 25 years and the European dimension. And, and as Mark has invited me to say a bit about the conflicts in Ireland, we've heard so much you know, during the, these last few days of excellent contributions by uh, so many prominent people from uh, different walks of life uh, about a conflict and uh, the art of compromise and uh, trying to, to make progress. And uh, is it a black future or is it a bright future or are we on? Uh, green or, or red lights and, uh, and all of the problems we see around us, whether it's you know, the, the Syrian problems and all of the people who have died and, and uh, into the fourth year of, of, the, of the conflict there, the, uh, the conflict that we see on our TV screens every day in the last few days since we arrived here of heightened tensions in, in Ukraine. Uh, what President Gorbachev said today, and I'm, going to, I'm sure you've seen that on, on some of the TV uh, state stations and uh, also the problems of the Middle East that are not so much on the airways now but were the highlights uh, a, a few months back and all of the other conflicts. Sometimes it can be quite uh, pessimistic and uh, sometimes sad but to today I think here in, in this city of Berlin we, we celebrate what have been hugely positive developments and I was a member of the Irish government as Minister for Employment, Minister for Labour, Social Affairs uh, back at that uh, particular time and uh, the Irish presidency took over on the 1st of January 1990, and I had the great honour and privilege uh, of going to the early meetings where, um, and sharing the, the meetings with ministers from various uh, departments were meeting for the very first time. And it seemed extraordinary to me as a, a fairly long black-haired guy at that time uh, to, to be able to go meet all these uh, men and women uh, who you know, even though they were only living a few miles from each other uh, across uh, Berlin or different parts of Germany, uh, it had not met and uh, had not uh, ever been together. Uh, and, you know, the powerful symbol it was uh, to, in those early discussions uh, that the European Union were able to, uh, to hold and uh, to be able to, to see what, what way we could help. And then the, uh, the, the bigger and more powerful meetings that I spoke about uh, earlier, about uh, Chancellor Cole um, with the Prime Minister of Ireland's then as, as President of the European Council, uh, getting together to try and find a way forward and, and to move ways forward. And as I said earlier on today, it, it, you'd, you'd find it hard to find anybody around Berlin or around the world today to say that uh, there was not disagreement uh, about uh, the unification of Germany. Um, of course, there was. Uh, there were... Um, members of the European Council who remain nameless because they've passed away, that limits it, doesn't it? Um, uh, who, who were totally opposed to it, who were fearful of it, uh, who even went to President Gorbachev uh, to see if he could help to make sure it wouldn't happen. Uh, so, you know, strange, strange times that we lived in then. And uh, I, I think, you know, we, we've seen the progress, we've seen the, the powerful Germany, we've seen the, the concern that there was then in the European Council um, of whether this would be harmful to, to Europe, uh, whether Germany would go one way and Europe would go the other, and 
Uh, Germany wouldn't care about Europe. It was the opposite. Uh, Germany helped so much to, uh, to, to, to bring Europe together and as the new countries uh, uh, looked to, to join the European Union, German played a, a big role. They had their own huge financial difficulties that uh, Herman Kohl had to, uh, to deal with, uh, foreign minister Genser, that had to try to move things together. And I think that huge success without going through that history lesson of um, 1989 to, uh, to 94 or, or, or beyond, um, uh, all those changes that happened. And then, I know Lawrence, who spoke to us uh, a while ago, the uh, Prime Minister of Malta, uh, he will remember uh, all of the negotiations that took place from uh, the late 90s on uh, to bring more countries into the European Union uh, and to bring so many of those, those countries of uh, Eastern Europe in. And the huge support there was and the huge um, ambition there was and desire there was, and sometimes I wish the uh, new ge rising generation uh, would, uh, I know that uh, they, all of the, the radicals of today will be the conservatives of tomorrow, and the more radicals they are today, the more conservative they'll be tomorrow. Uh, that's the way it, uh, it happens in politics, the way, the way I see, see it often. Uh, but uh, I understand the view, but if they could understand the huge change and they understand uh, the huge progress that has made during that period, and we remember back again when uh, it was the Irish presidency in 2004. Again, I was lucky enough um, when Malta joined as well, Ernst, but uh, that day, I think, was the Eastern Europeans. You joined with Cyprus, but uh, it was all the Eastern Europeans that that was their big day, the day of welcomes, when in Dublin they, they all joined. And again, that a huge, huge uh, determination uh, that there was to them to be part of the European Union. And uh, needless can I say, uh, to particularly to the uh, German uh, people here, uh, the enormous role that Germany played to, to enable uh, that, that all to happen. And I think for all those reasons, uh, Germany should be uh, uh, commended uh, and thanked, uh, often criticised for this, that or the other, but I think their, their huge role of stability and progress that they've, they've helped o over the years. And all those countries that have, have joined, and of course followed by your own country president later on, uh, and, and other in Croatia, uh, were, who yesterday uh, were, were speaking here. I just want to say all of that unity of, of purpose in, uh, in Europe that happened. On the other side of all of that conflict, 25 years ago in my own country, uh, the conflict continued. The, uh, the violence that had really started in 1968, uh, around the time of the, of the Prague uh, invasion, and uh, that, uh, that had gone on unabated. It started as a civil rights movement uh, based on the, uh, the long history that we've had with our near neighbour in the United Kingdom, uh, turned into, into violence. Um, and at this time, 25 years ago, uh, we were uh, about 3,000 people had, had died, tens of thousands have been injured, huge amount of people had left uh, the, the island, a uh, whole young generation saw no, no future uh, and, and moved away to different parts of the world. Uh, it was... Uh, looked at maybe around the world as, as Catholic and Protestant, but it, it wasn't uh, so simple. It was the division of, of nationalists and republicans on one side against loyalists, unionists on the other. Uh, one side loyal to the uh, concept of a united Ireland, to one Ireland, uh, and uh, the, the other side loyal to, uh, to, the, to the British uh, monarchy and to, to, to British rule uh, in Ireland. And that conflict had uh, tens and tens of uh, thousands of, of people who, who suffered uh, because of it. Um, uh, I just want to, to say what, you know, sometimes the Irish question is held up because it was one where uh, we did bury differences. Uh, it's not easy uh, to bury differences. It, it's not easy for people to hold the hand, handship of friendship to, together and try and move forward. But, uh, Tony Blair and I, and um, uh, earlier Prime Ministers, where we didn't, uh, the late Mrs. Thatcher and uh, Ireland didn't get on too good, um, to put it mildly, uh, but sometimes we did. Uh, sometimes we didn't, most times we didn't. But uh, as time moved on, I think we, we tried to, uh, to pull ourselves together and, and to make progress. And uh, back in 1998, when Tony Blair and I 
uh, signed the Good Friday Agreement, we were the two joint signatories of that agreement, uh, it was uh, to uh, find a way and to find new institutions uh, where people could work together. Where there wasn't, it wasn't a democratic system as we know it, where there was a government and opposition. Because the institutions in Northern Ireland, there really is no opposition. Uh, both sides work together within an executive and they share power based on their electoral number. Uh, the first minister is from one side, the deputy first minister is from the other side. Uh, but for now, for 16 years, they have, not perfectly, uh, but worked together uh, to try and bring peace and harmony, and more than anything else, to make sure uh, that the bombing and the killing, uh, that the sectarian assassinations, uh, that the displacement of people has uh, stopped. And uh, while there's always the fear that there are minorities who uh, would want to, uh, to bring tr trouble back, which there always is in the end of conflicts, uh, it is possible uh, to, uh, to make peace. Uh, Mr. Rabin said you make peace with your enemies, not your friends. Uh, sometimes in politics, you have to make them with your friends. But anyway, uh, that's the, the art of politics uh, sometimes. Uh, but uh, it's a good idea to try and make it with your enemies uh, most of the time. And, and we were able to do that. And, and I think one of the, the good things about the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy and what they are um, spreading and, and what they're endeavoring to do uh, is to use their good offices, not to lecture, um, not, not to try to intimidate, not to force people, uh, but to try and bring people together. And that's what's happened here uh, in these last few days. And yesterday, I, I thought Mark it was... It, it, it was good to see, um, I don't know if they're still in the room, but it, it was good to see the, uh, the clash with Turkey and Cyprus. Sometimes it's good, you know, the, to, have, uh, to, to have that and to be able to, to say where we were and we're talking about the walls. By the way, I have to say, talking about walls, there's, we've still 50 of them in Belfast, um, but we changed the names uh, rather than calling them uh, w walls that uh, divided people. We now call them peace walls. And uh, tourists uh, in their thousands come to, to see the peace walls. Uh, I'd, I'd like to tell you I, I could take them all down tomorrow, but uh, it's, it's, it's slightly uh, difficult to do that because uh, the people who live on either side are fearful of the coming down. You can work around them uh, very well, but uh, hopefully someday we'll move to uh, seeing them gone uh, forever. But I think what ICD are doing is to try and uh, give a platform for people and hopefully as time moves on, uh, that uh, people will be able to come together more and share views and pull people together. I had a unique experience in, in Northern Ireland. Um, my parents were Republican. They came from the uh, anti-British uh, side. My, my father was absolutely and totally uh, um, anti-British. I'm not sure what he would have thought of me uh, by the time my political career was on because of some of the people that I... Uh, dined and, and worked with, uh, it certainly wouldn't have been his, his cup of tea. But anyway, uh, I half convinced my mother that it was okay. And, but it, 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 you were bringing people uh, together that had totally opposing views, that literally hated each other, and that's not uh, to exaggerate that term. I remember once negotiating with the leadership of the Loyalists and the Republican, as you know them, the IRA, and as some of the other organizations and Red Hand Commandos and Ulster Volunteers Force, Ulster Defence Regiments. And they, I was in the room with them, about 10 of 12 of them. And they, they said just to open up the meeting to get the, uh, the temperature right, they said, um, to the best of our knowledge, Prime Minister, uh, you're the odd person out in this room. Uh, and I looked around the room and I saw that they were all men. And they didn't put me an odd person out. Uh, everyone in Northern Ireland was, in those days, in negotiations are white males, as we were talking about earlier on, which isn't a good idea. Uh, the women actually were the same people in Northern Ireland, thank God. I used to love to see them coming, gave some bit of semblance of, of, of life to it. But I said, well, come on, tell me, why am I the odd man out after a, a break? And they said, to the best of our collective knowledge here, and we're from all sides, you're the only one who hasn't murdered anyone during the Troubles. Well, that reassured me greatly. Um, but it, 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 is, uh, it, it is necessary in conflicts to sit down uh, and to try and to find ways and listen and work and work at it. And I must say Tony Blair uh, was a great partner 
Uh, he, he was a great partner in whatever arguments about conflicts elsewhere, uh, but in Northern Ireland he did what uh, British leaders had not done for, uh, for hundreds of years and uh, was prepared to compromise and try and make ways forward. So uh, I think, not to go on any longer, Mark, but I think there is out of all these things as we look back over 25 years of the wall, as we look back in 25 years of what's happened in Eastern Europe, President, we've, we've seen the progress that's been made, we've seen the development, uh, we've seen the um, uh, great changes that have happened where people are working together, where countries are working together. Uh, in my youth, it would have been unthinkable uh, to be able to work and deal with the countries of Eastern Europe. It just wasn't possible. Um, it, it, and the, the, maybe the kind of people that would have come to Ireland from some of these countries uh, would not have been uh, to our liking uh, in those years from different regimes. Uh, but now it's, the world is, it is this, this village that we speak about. And, and that's the great thing about uh, cultural diplomacy. And where the word cultural diplomacy may not have been used all of the time, what we all practice, regardless of what profession uh, that we're in, uh, I think it is, it is wonderful. And um, today we heard uh, the issue about maybe it's by pulling all the cities of the world together. Well, I beg to differ on that. Uh, I was the mayor of my own city. Uh, I think pulling the cities together would be as useless as me talking any longer. Um, I think you have to pull uh, sovereign, so sovereign uh, governments together. I think sovereign governments are, are necessary. Uh, people have a right to change sovereign governments. If you don't like uh, to, uh, to change um, governments, well, you, you can go out and vote. Some of those mayors seem to go on forever, actually, in my experience. So I think it's, uh, it, it, it is a good thing that cultural diplomacy uh, allows us to, uh, to develop all of these things. And I think ICD is a good forum, and I, I think we can build on that. So I think from the difficulties of Europe uh, to now the great successes that we celebrate tonight, where in my country, where we've moved away from horrendous and horrific violence that brought multiple, uh, multiple deaths, uh, to where we can see our progress to a future. We should look on all the wars that are around us, uh, not as something to just put our heads in the sand and say it is impossible, uh, but to say this is a, an opportunity for us to, uh, to work on. And I, I would like on a, a future occasion, uh, Mark, where we challenge some of these things in these conferences and you know, bring people who have different divergent views. Because uh, un unfortunately, there are not many uh, platforms uh, where uh, these people can come together and where they are challenged in a, in a respectful way. So ladies and gentlemen, do enjoy the night of, of, of celebration. Uh, Mark always runs a good party. Uh, and I know that he will have food and drink to keep us all going uh, well past the time of the wall came down, which was about half 12 in the morning. Thank you very much.